a tumultuous rock and roll marriage, the devastating death of a friend and former first lady, cancer. Carly Simon was one of the most popular singer-songwriters of the 1970s, but her personal life took a lot of hits along the way. In her memoir, Boys in the Trees, Carly Simon wrote about a teenager identified only as Billy, the son of friends of her parents who rented a house near Simon's family one summer. Simon, who was seven years old at the time, caught him, 16, spying on her older sister Lucy while she was sunbathing. Shortly thereafter, Billy turned his attention to Carly, and a series of physical encounters took place over that summer and subsequent summers as well. Simon had convinced herself that the abusive relationship was consensual, telling people, I thought I was in a romance. She told her older sisters about what were essentially assaults right away. While Carly thinks her sisters didn't believe her, they must have told their mother, because Carly's mom banished Billy from the family home for one month, Simon wrote, which in retrospect feels like a strangely mild response. Throughout her life, Carly Simon has endured a series of mental health issues, ones with their own individual suites of debilitating symptoms that also manifested in ways that affected her professional life and ability to express herself. According to her memoir, Boys in the Trees, depression ran on her family, with the singer's father, Richard Simon, showing signs of the mental illness and experiencing dark periods in childhood and well into adulthood. Simon inherited those episodes, writing in her memoir, A lot of my own struggles, good and bad, were the same as his. Self-centeredness, shame, inadequacy, ambition, depression. As an adult and well into her years of mega fame, Simon would experience panic attacks. According to ABC News, she was struck during two 1981 concerts in Pittsburgh. In the midst of the first show, she was unable to move. In the second one, she collapsed on stage. I was lost. I was really lost. The two biggest names in post-60s singer-songwriter-oriented soft rock combined their empires in November 1972, when James Taylor married Carly Simon. The marriage produced a few triumphs, both professional and personal, but it led to a lot more problems, heartaches, and pain. In her memoir, Boys in the Trees, Simon honed in on Taylor's destructive drug use, emotional unavailability, and infidelity as some of the worst parts of their marriage. In May 1976, according to Simon's memoir, Taylor told Simon that he had to see a doctor to see if he had gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted disease. Simon wrote, Ironically, I was just about to tell him that I thought I was pregnant. I went downstairs to break the white book guitar on his head. He caught me in time. At one point, Taylor kept a mistress near the family's New York home, setting her up in a studio apartment. After mutual infidelities and Taylor's ongoing issues with substance abuse, Simon filed for divorce in 1983. Since ending their troubled marriage in 1983, Carly Simon and James Taylor have barely talked since, and that's all on Taylor. In 2013, Simon was barred from performing at a charity event to benefit victims of the Boston Marathon bombings. Simon told Salon, I was told that I couldn't, and the reason was that he was going to be there. There are all kinds of not only political but musical events that I'm just not allowed to be a part of because everybody knows James won't do it if Carly's there. Taylor confirmed that he doesn't communicate with Simon, the mother of his children. He told The Telegraph, that's sort of the point of divorce. In May 1998, CNN reported that Carly Simon, 53 years old at the time, had been in treatment for breast cancer for several months. According to The Independent, Simon had noticed a potentially troubling lump sometime before, Simon told the outlet. I asked various doctors about it for years and they said, oh, don't worry, we'll watch it. Then one doctor said, you know what, I'd rather see it in a jar than in your breast. Tests in October 1997 showed that it was cancerous, and Simon underwent mastectomy surgery soon after, and then followed it with a course of aggressive chemotherapy treatments. Simon purposely hadn't publicly divulged the news, but only did so after the National Enquirer looked to publish a story the musician worried would make her illness seem more serious than it was. Simon told the New York Daily News, I was in the hospital for one night. The prognosis was good. My doctor gave me the option of whether to have chemo. I decided to play it safe. You know, I went into that thing, well, okay, I've got it now. I'm going to fight it with everything that I have. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it. Nearing the end of her chemotherapy regimen in spring 1998, Simon spoke about the innate terror of being diagnosed with cancer. The singer told the New York Daily News, It takes some time to get used to the fear of having it, but I've always thought of myself as being a warrior. Manhattan accountant Ken Starr once worked as a financial manager for very wealthy clients, including Natalie Portman, Uma Thurman, and Sylvester Stallone, according to the New York Daily News. He reportedly offered huge returns on lower-risk investments, but instead simply took his client's money and spent it on luxuries for himself and his fourth wife. Starr then lost the rest of his client's money in shady deals. In 2010, Starr was arrested and charged with a long list of financial crimes and he entered a guilty plea on counts of wire fraud, money laundering, and investment advisor fraud, all of it adding up to a Ponzi scheme to the tune of $30 million. 
He was ordered to pay restitution to many of his duped clients, which included Carly Simon. Simon lost a great deal of her amassed fortune to Starr's scams, pointing out that she wasn't an heir to the Simon & Schuster fortune because her father sold his shares of the company he started before his death in 1960. In the midst of this financial crisis, Simon considered unloading her family home, telling the observer, If I sold this house, which is our family compound, if I sold that and lived in a trailer, we would have money. Movie producer Harvey Weinstein, once among the most powerful individuals in Hollywood, stood trial for the second time in 2022, following allegations of abuse, harassment, and assault. Weinstein's downfall and prosecution led to the Me Too movement, and in the wake of that, Carly Simon divulged details of her own unsavory encounters with Weinstein. His actions weren't of a sexual nature, but they left a musician feeling embarrassed and deeply uncomfortable. Simon told The Guardian, He asked me to score a movie that his wife at the time had made. I hired the musicians and scored the movie, and at the recording session I said, Well, how shall I get paid? He said, Well, we'll figure it out later, and he never followed up. In 1998, Simon encountered Weinstein at the Camp David presidential retreat. Both of them invited guests by then-President Bill Clinton. Weinstein screened the film Paris, Texas, and then approached Simon. Simon recalled to The Guardian, Harvey had the nerve to get this cheap guitar from somewhere and bring it to me in the theater seat and say, Sing now, sing Anticipation. So he embarrassed me greatly. I couldn't not do it because everybody turned around to look at me in the theater and there I was. Carly Simon was raised in a family of four siblings, including two older sisters and a younger brother, Peter Simon, who worked as a freelance photographer. He published calendars of his landscapes and collections of his photographs and produced a biographical DVD of his life behind the lens as a chronicler of the 1960s anti-war protest movement, the hippie counterculture, and the golden age of rock and roll. While remembering her brother, Carly Simon told the Vineyard Gazette, He was a mover and shaker and always originating the games we played and he got everyone to play them, and he always had a project. In November 2018, Peter Simon died at Martha's Vineyard Hospital, with the reported cause of death being cardiac arrest following a cancer diagnosis. He was 71 years old. There is a lot of talent in the Simon family, particularly of the musical variety. In addition to pop superstar Carly Simon and composer Lucy Simon, there was the eldest sibling Joanna Simon, who first made a name for herself as an opera singer in the 1960s. In 1962, she co-starred in the New York City Opera's production of The Marriage of Figaro and won the Marian Anderson Award for Most Promising New Singer, which she turned into a career as a classical concert vocalist. Simon segued again in the ensuing decades, working as an arts correspondent for the McNeil Lair News Hour on PBS, where she won an Emmy Award in 1991. On October 19, 2022, Simon's daughter Lucy confirmed on Facebook that her mother had died, having been diagnosed with thyroid cancer some time before. She was 85 years old. Before she struck out on her own as a solo act in the 1970s, Carly Simon's first stab at performing came as part of the duo act, The Simon Sisters. Carly and her immediately older sister Lucy Simon fashioned a vocal folk act, serving as openers for more prominent groups playing clubs and the thriving folk scene in Greenwich Village, New York in the 1960s. After The Simon Sisters separated, Lucy Simon had a very successful solo career, cutting two albums, Lucy Simon and Stolen Time, in the 1970s, before moving into children's music in the 1980s. Then she wrote the score for the Broadway musical adaptation of The Secret Garden, for which she received a Tony Award nomination. According to a family representative who spoke to the Associated Press, Lucy Simon died at home in Piedmont, New York, on October 20, 2022, the day after sister Joanna died, following a breast cancer diagnosis. Lucy Simon was 82. Carly Simon, coping with the back-to-back -back deaths of her two older sisters and only remaining siblings, released a statement of tribute and mourning. Carly wrote in the statement, their loss will be long and haunting. As sad as this day is, it's impossible to mourn them without celebrating their incredible lives. In 1983, Carly Simon began one of the most profound friendships of her life, and it was with someone even more famous than she was, a former First Lady of the United States. While dining at the Martha's Vineyard restaurant, The Ocean Club, Simon ran into her friend John F. Kennedy Jr., who introduced the singer to his mother, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Simon told NBC News, and it wasn't long after that, she called me and asked me if I would write a memoir. Simon didn't produce the book at the time, but she wrote two children's books with Onassis's guidance, who served as a mother figure to the musician. In April 1994, when Onassis's family announced the matriarch's impending death from blood cancer, Simon was among the very few people invited to the deathbed to say goodbye. I couldn't believe that my friend was slipping away. Simon recalled to NBC News, I held her hand and told her I loved her. Four years later, another close and very well-known friend of Simon would die prematurely from cancer, 56-year-old photographer and Wings member Linda McCartney. 
In 1997, Simon was diagnosed with breast cancer, the disease that killed McCartney in 1998. Simon told CNN, I visited some women who are so much worse off, my heart breaks for them. Simon went on to tell the news outlet that when her close friend Linda McCartney died, she was crushed. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE.